was July 2010, two in the morning. I can receive the phone call and I could barely understand the person on the other side of the line because they were speaking Korea. What I did understand is that my father was in the hospital. Fast forward a few months, it's 2010 in the fall. I've just started a PhD program, something I never intended to do. I've just gotten married. We've recently moved to a new town. And in the PhD program, they asked, what will you study? I had no idea. I decided I'd heard about this thing called meditation and mindfulness. So I wanted to learn if that could help students. What I found and what I didn't know before is that meditation helped me. It helped me to be more calm and clear in stressful situations. It helped me to focus more and handle all the things that needed to be done. Fortunately, my dad's case was resolved later that fall as he had surgery and is recovering well. And I've learned to have those skills that help me to not listen to fix problems all the time, not listen to win in arguments, but listen to understand. Mindfulness has given me that ability to create that space so that I can listen with openness and curiosity. And that listening is powerful in terms of my relationships with my father, with my wife, and with the people I work with. A feeling of inner restlessness when you feel like something is missing in your life. Now, this is exactly what I experienced shortly before finishing my studies. Something was wrong. From the outside, everything was just fine. But inside of me, I felt like I was being empty. There was this hole. And it took me a while to bring up the courage to follow this call that I perceived to seek out a life that was more meaningful to me, because clearly that was a meaning crisis. My search for meaning turned out to be a very adventurous journey around the world. Now on this journey, I was so lucky to meet a mentor that taught me how to meditate, that taught me how to work with my fears, how to listen to people, how to communicate nonviolently. And all of these skills, as I later learned when I became a mindfulness teacher, are what we learn when we practice mindfulness and emotional intelligence. We all can learn them. And why should we do that? In my personal life, everything has changed. I feel like I'm walking through the world with more clarity, with more connection, with a deeper sense of centeredness and awareness and joy. We are living in the age of information. And in the 1970s, Nobel Prize winning scientist and economist Herbert Simon said that a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. Yes, and we believe that we have all things in common. So have you experienced that high levels of stress impacted your team's ability to collaborate negatively? And do you feel like you and your colleagues are struggling to find a work-life balance? If so, this is for you. I'd like to invite you to try this practice that can give you more calmness and clarity in the moment. We're gonna take three breaths together. And on the first breath, breathing in and breathing out, just noticing that you're breathing. On the second inhale and exhale, as you exhale, relax your body, your arms, your legs. And on the third inhale and exhale, allow the question to arise, what's important now? Thank you for practicing. So why are we here? Life is busy for all of us. This is just one number from Gallup, the Gallup survey that highlights the incredible challenges that we're faced with right now. And what do we do? Well, we can cultivate an inner set of strength that helps us navigate those challenges more skillfully. And this is exactly why the Search Inside Yourself program was created. 
we see emotional intelligence as a set of core skills that are trainable. And we train them by learning more about how the brain works. And as we understand better how attention and awareness works, we learn how to cultivate them with the practices of mindfulness. When we do that, we can benefit from a great set of skills, like we can expand our leadership, we improve our collaboration and our performance, and we enhance our overall well-being. Many noted CEOs like Todd Pierce, Salesforce Vice President, recognize that mindfulness skills can help you be better at work and in your personal life. If you want to benefit from that, we invite you to join us for the Search Inside Yourself summer program that Joseph and I will be offering. Yes, join us. Thank you.